Welcome to Function Analysis. In this video, we're going to talk about concave up and concave down. Basically, it's known as the concavity of a function or the concavity of an interval um, throughout a function. And this does incorporate into our unit here on rate of change because concavity has a lot to do with rate of change if you truly understand the definition. So let's first talk about rate of change again. Hopefully you've watched other videos on rate of change, but let's briefly talk about rate of change. So the rate of change at a point is the slope of the tangent line at that point. We talked about that. If you're like, what does that mean? Go back and watch the video about the rate of change at a point. Now, here's the thing that's you got to make sense, right? You think about the rate of change at a point. Simple, right? The rate of change at a point could be negative. Rate of change at a point could be positive. All right, life is awesome. Life is great. This is cool. Okay. However, the slope, which is the rate of change, can also change from point to point. This is where it gets a little confusing. So the rate of change can change? Well, yeah. So think about this as a scale, right? Very negative would be a, would be considered small, right? If you're way left, you, you know, you might be like negative 1000, but that's a really small number. It's a large magnitude of a number, but it's negative. So it's considered very small, right? Then on the very far right, we have you know, 2000, positive 2000. That's a very big number, very big. It's both positive and has a big magnitude. But if we think about a very small number, a very negative number, right? That's going to have a slope that is, again, really, really, again, it has a very large magnitude, but it's still a negative number. So this would be like, like this, right? This would be a slope that is, first off, it's negative, but it's really negative. I mean, you know, you could look at this as it's really fast. It's fast down, right? If I were to put a bowling ball on this line, that bowling ball is going to roll very quickly straight down. So this slope would not only be negative, but it would also be um, a very big negative number, which would still make it really small. Hopefully that makes sense. Then on the far right here, we have a very big positive number. So it's positive and it's a high magnitude number. So here we're talking like this, right? So again, it's positive because it's going up, but it too would be really fast. So, so the two lines I have drawn here are both fast lines because they're high in magnitude, but one is negative and one is positive, okay? Now, in between, we have a very flat line. This would be a slope of zero, very flat, completely horizontal. But in between, if we kind of like think about a scale here, you know, we could draw this line right here. This line would also have a negative slope, but if I would put a bowling ball on it, it wouldn't roll quite as fast as the green line. It would be still negative, but it would actually have a, a higher slope. Still negative, but it's, it's, it's a higher number. If you think about a number scale, negative to positive. And then again, the equivalent over here would be, again, this would be a positive line, but its slope is not quite as big as, as the green one. The green one would be a really big magnitude. And then we could even put some in between. So here, so here would be another one that is very, very, very slow. It's still negative, but it has a very low magnitude. It's, it's almost zero. It's almost flat, but it's definitely a little bit negative versus this one here, which is again, almost flat, but it has a very low magnitude, all right? So what I want you to notice here is that slope is a measurement of rate of change, but slope itself could also change. So if we think about it being very big number, but negative, and then as we move from left to right here, as we move in this direction, left to right, we see that the slope is getting bigger. So here we have, it's small, it's small because it's negative and it's really negative. But as we move left to right, the slope gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, if we stay in the negatives, eventually we hit zero where we just flatten out and then we start to turn up. So now we're positive and our slope gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, what the heck does this have to do with anything? Well, let's examine the rate of change at points along this parabola. So let's look at this point right here. If I were to make a tangent line, I would say, wow, that's a really negative and a very big negative number, right? That has a large magnitude, but it's negative. If I, get a, if I put a bowling ball on that line, it's going to roll fast. And then if we compare this slope right here, we'd say, okay, it's still negative, but it's still pretty high magnitude, but not quite as high as the first red line. And then we put a dot right here. We say, okay, so that one, again, it's still negative. It's still negative, but um, we definitely see that it is less negative. So it's actually increasing. So if we look at these three lines, 
They are all negative, but the slope is getting bigger in terms of it's going from a really small negative number or a really low negative number to a negative number closer to zero. And then we look at this point right here and we draw that line. That's a terrible line, sorry. Um, let me redo that one. And uh, we say, oh, okay, um, you know, that, it's not much better, but we say, okay, that, that it's still negative, still negative, but we see that it's not quite as negative. It, you know, if you put a bowling ball on it, it's still gonna roll down, but not quite as fast maybe. And then we hit right here, we hit zero. We hit right zero, zero right there, right? That's where the rate of change at that point is clearly zero. Okay, so one thing we could stop right here and kind of say is that when you have uh, an extrema, a min or max, at that extrema, your rate of change will be zero. Makes sense, right? All right, then we start to continue around, and let's use blue now for this side, and we see that um, our slope is now positive. Our slope is now positive. So where you make a switch from a negative rate of change to a positive rate of change is gonna be an extrema. At the extrema, you're gonna have a rate of change of zero. On one side, if you're positive or negative, on the other side, you make a switch. That's gonna be the, the definition of an extrema, right? Okay, and then let's you know find the rate of change. So now, now what's happening is our rate of change is getting bigger. It, it's getting bigger, right? And then maybe we come all the way over here, and now our rate of change is high magnitude and it's positive. So if we track the rate of change of my points, I start off with a, you know, think about a number, right? We think of negative infinity to positive infinity. So think about that scale from negative infinity to positive infinity. The rate of change started way over here, very negative, so very low. And as we move left to right, that rate of change, that slope at these tangent lines, it started to get closer and closer and closer to zero. It started to level off, right? So it, it technically the slope increased. By getting closer to zero, the slope increased. Then we actually hit zero right here, which we're now saying is how you can identify an extrema. And then as we continue to analyze the slope, as we move throughout this um, parabola, we see that the slope continued to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it started off really negative. It stayed negative, but it got closer to zero. And then it surpassed zero and it was small. And then as we get further and further into the right, the slope continues to increase. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is at every point we have a different slope, a different rate of change. But as we move throughout a function, that rate of change also changes. Now, where the heck am I going with this? Well, new vocabulary alert here, concavity, the whole point of this video. One definition is what we call concave up. The graph of a function is concave up on intervals in which the rate of change is increasing. I'm not saying that you have a increase a rate of change that's increasing, right? I'm not saying, it's, I'm not saying you have a positive rate of change. No, 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 no. I'm saying that you are concave up over an interval. By the way, you cannot be concave up at a point. You are concave up over an interval. And if over that interval, your rate of change is increasing, then we say you are concave up over that interval. So for, for, for a function to be concave up over an interval, the rate of change must be increasing throughout that interval. So let's go back to my picture here. This graph is entirely concave up. Now let me explain to you why it's entirely concave up. Because as I follow along this line, as long as I, along, as I stop at any point, I could find the rate of change. And if I move a little bit, find another rate of change. Move a little bit, find another rate of change. Move a little bit, find another rate of change. As I continue throughout this function, the rate of change is increasing. It was really negative, still negative, but not so negative. So on the scale of negative infinity to infinity, right, on this, on a number scale, the rate of change was moving left to right. It was really, really negative. It was still negative, but moving closer to zero. Then it actually hit zero. And then we continued into a, a low but positive number, like maybe uh, one fourth or something like that, but it's still positive. And then we get to even a higher magnitude slope and then a really high magnitude slope. So again, this entire function that you're looking at right here would be concave up because throughout the entire function, the slope at any given point, the rate of change at any given point is constantly increasing. 
Now, for some kids, that's like, whoa, you just explained a lot there. But listen, it's actually really simple. Concave up means if you draw your line, your rate of change, your tangent line, and the, the, the function is above it, you're concave up. I mean, it's actually really simple. So let's look at another picture right here, right? You know, most kids would just look at this and say, yeah, concave up makes sense. Like I, I look at this graph, it's, it's, it's concave up. But, you know, I don't want you to just look at it and think that. I want you to understand the definition as to why it really truly is concave up. Because if we make tangent lines as we go throughout this graph, those tangent lines have a slope that is slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It started off really negative, still negative, still negative, but getting closer to zero, so it's getting bigger. And then it actually hits zero right down here at that extrema, and then it's positive, more positive, even more positive, even more, more positive. So as the rate of change is increasing as you go throughout, we see that we have concave up. Now let's check out another parabola. Now, you notice right away this parabola is opening down, so you might be guessing what's coming next. But let's again, let's track the rate of change. At this point, the rate of change is a pretty, pretty big positive number. That's a pretty, pretty big positive number, right? Here, the rate of change is it's still positive. Sorry, it's not very good. There we go. Made it better. Right? The rate of change is still positive, but it's not as steep, right? It's, it's a small number. Again, if we're thinking about a scale from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. Here, we're, we're starting out on this side. We're starting out really big, a, a not, not necessarily infinity, but again, a big positive slope. And then as we progress through this function, we always look at functions left to right, our slope is actually getting smaller. Our slope is lessening. And then it actually gets to that extrema where our slope is, is flat. It, it turns into a zero. So, so we started off over here, but now we're moving this direction. We, we hit a slope of zero. And then now our slope is becoming more and more and more and more and more and more. Sorry for these terrible lines. But more and more negative until over here, it's, it's a, really, a really steep negative line. So what's different about this um, graph than the previous one is as we follow this graph, we always read graphs left to right. From the left, our slope is big. It's a really big slope, but now it starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller, and then it flattens out. It's zero, and then now our slope actually becomes negative, so where we switch from positive to negative is where you have an extrema, but again, our slope is now becoming more and more negative. Our slope is actually going down, 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 down. That is concave down. So the graph of a function is concave down on intervals in which the rate of change is decreasing. So again, go back to this picture. What's happening was, as I looked at the graph from left to right, the rate of change, as I stopped at any given point, the rate of change was decreasing. It started off really big, and as I moved left to right, the rate of change was going down. So that's why we would call that concave down. So for, for a function to be concave down over an interval, the rate of change must be decreasing throughout that interval. Okay, so now most kids are like, Mr. Mr. Why are you explaining this? You're explaining it to be so confusing. Just look at it. If it's going up, it's concave up. If it's going down, it's concave down. Yes, but sometimes we can make a switch. So in general, yes, you know, so if a lot of kids say, all right, you know, here's a graph. There it is. Is that concave up or concave down? Well, if you make a tangent line and the, the, the function is below it, you're concave down. Okay, you're right. That works. If you are like this and you make a line, a tangent line, you say, okay, is the function above or below the line? It's above, it's concave up. I mean, yes, I mean, that, that, that does work. But we actually can change. Check this graph out. All right, let's track our rate of change. So here our rate of change is very, 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 very positive. Here our rate of change is still positive, but it's, it's lesser. Here our rate of change is even lesser. It's, it's, it's even lesser, right? So our, our, our rate of change is, is dropping. So when your rate of change is dropping, that's concave down. And again, it makes sense. The, the purple function is below my red line, so it's concave down. So over here, my graph is concave down. But interesting enough, at some point, that changes. If we continue on, like just let's jump over here for a second. Now my rate of change is positive, but now it's, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger. So somewhere in between, I, I actually switched. So as I track this function, 
my rate of change is, is big, but it's getting lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser and lesser. So over here, I'm concave down. Over here, the rate of change starts off kind of low, not so steep, and it's, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, every slope on this function, every rate of change at any point on this function is positive. I never switched from a negative to a positive. It was always positive, but it was really positive in the beginning, and then it was slowly starting to get closer to zero, and it never actually hit zero, but then somewhere, somewhere, like right around here, it, it, it switched back to an increasing slope. So it's still positive, but instead of becoming flatter, it switched to becoming steeper. So we clearly see that over here, I'm concave up. So again, you know, in general, yes, you know, to make this simple at the end of the day, you know, put a point here, draw a tangent line, the graph is below the line, concave down, put a point over here, draw a line, the graph is above the line, concave up. But notice I switched, I switched from concave up to concave down, somewhere right around here. That is called an inflection point. Where you switch from concave down to concave up, you have what's known as an inflection point. So in that last little vocabulary here. So a point of inflection occurs at input values where the rate of change of the function changes from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. This occurs where the graph of a polynomial function changes from concave up to concave down or vice versa, concave down to concave up. So just to draw you what that other one would look like. So um, imagine this, right? I'm concave down right here, and then I'm concave up. Somewhere I switched, that's an inflection point. So if you switch from concave down to concave up, you are an inflection point. Here maybe be another example, right? Okay, so what's going on in this function? Well, right here, I'm concave up. Right here, I'm concave down. So wherever that switch was made in the middle is an inflection point. So hopefully that in this video, it's very easy for you to see and look at a graph and understand concave up or concave down. I really hope so. It's, it's not something that happens at a single point. You cannot be concave down or concave up at a single point. It has to happen over an interval. So if I'm looking at this graph in that green interval, I would be concave down. In that turquoise uh, interval, I would be concave up. If you make a switch, you're an inflection point. So be careful though, because you know, go back to these parabolas. I never switched. I was concave down the whole time. What did switch was I was positive slope to a negative slope. Okay, that's the definition of an extrema, where your rate of change changes from being positive to negative or negative to positive, you create an extrema. But when you switch concavity, you're an inflection point. So don't confuse the two. So for this graph, I'm concave down throughout the entire graph. And again, I really want you to understand the definition as to why it's concave down, not just because you visually see it, but because you understand the idea that as I move throughout that function, the rate of change for here being concave down, the rate of change is decreasing. It started out very positive and then slowly flattened out, getting closer to zero, and then it actually turned and became negative, and then it became really negative. So the rate of change was decreasing the entire time, whereas here, it, right here, sorry, the rate of change was increasing the entire time. That's the definition of concave up and concave down. All right, a little bit of a confusing topic, hopefully a little bit easy at the end, but great concept, not only for pre-calculus, but for calculus as well, concavity.